All right, so when we describe functions, we've talked about the domain and range. We'll keep doing that, okay? And we'll keep, that'll always be an implied part whenever you graph is that you describe the domain and range. <coughs> but now we're going to talk about some characteristics of graphs, okay? The first thing we're going to talk about is continuity. Continuity. Which is a big word, but it's not a really hard concept, okay? It's really... Any part of the graph that you can draw that you don't have to lift your pencil up for, okay? So if I have this graph that looks like this, that is continuous, right? I never had to lift my pencil up. I can just draw it. Um, you've done several that might look like this. And though I have to pick my pencil up, this part of the graph itself is continuous. And this part of the graph itself is continuous, okay? So any part that it doesn't, like, come apart on, all right, it's continuous for that. All right, so can we look at a graph and tell if it's continuous or not? Do I, do I need to give you a couple examples? Give you some that are not continuous. That's what we call a piecewise function. Two pieces make up one graph. If you don't have to lift up your pencil when you draw it, it's continuous. Do what? So, like, basically, if you just have an end point, like this circle, as long as both have the arrows, and there's no breaks in the middle of it. See how this breaks and stops and jumps? Oh, no, it's the same line. Well, it, together it makes up one graph, okay? We're going to talk about all different types of functions that are not continuous, okay? Because that's what you'll have to know. Okay, the first one is what we call, so I'm going to say types of discontinuities. Continuities, which is another big word for things that are not really hard to understand. The first one is what we call come on, a removable discontinuity. continuity. And this is a real fancy way of saying that your graph has a hole in it. So maybe I have this line, <laughs> and right in the middle of my line there's a hole. That is a removable discontinuity. Okay. Now, your calculator is not always going to show this. So you have to be able to see it algebraically. And let me show you. There's one scenario when this happens. If I have this function, it looks, it actually looks like this. This is actually the... That's actually the graph of f of x equals x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. Here's what happens. When you look at that domain-wise, why might there be a hole at 2? Or why can I not be 2? What happens at 2? Look at the equation. What happens when you plug 2 in that equation? It can't be zero. I already know the bottom can't be zero, okay? So when I plug two in here, the bottom becomes zero and it makes it undefined. That's why, okay? That's why it can't be there. But this is a special kind because if you look at this equation, x squared minus four is the same thing. Remember that difference of two squares we talked about when we factor, okay? 
When you have something in the original equation, right? I have x minus 2 in the bottom. I have to take that into account. Even though if I were to factor this, it would cancel out and leave me x plus 2, okay? Yes, this is the equation of y equals x plus 2. It's just a line. But because I defined it this way to start with, I have to leave that 2 out because I cannot have the bottom equal to 0. So when you have a factor that cancels top and bottom, okay, you have to leave that hole in your graph, and that's what we call a removable discontinuity. Okay? So let me make you a note here. This only happens when factors cancel from top and bottom, and it's where the bottom would equal zero, okay? It makes a hole in the line. So this is another one of those examples where graphically you need to be able to identify, hey, this has a removable discontinuity. Okay, it's got a hole in it. But algebraically also, I can see why it has a hole there. Does that make sense? Yes, no, or maybe so? Okay. Remember your calculator's not gonna show that up. That's one that your calculator's not gonna show you. You're gonna have to be intuitive, right, Jerome? Oh my goodness, can y'all not look so down? All right, the next one is what we call a jump discontinuity. And this is what I showed you the first time. Continuity. Okay. Usually this is what we call a piecewise function. Okay. And I hope at some point you have seen a piecewise function. A piecewise function restricts domain. So this one says, as long as x is bigger than 2, then the line is x minus 6. Okay. So I'm not going to, do y'all need me to, you probably do. If I plug 2 in, that tells me that when x is 2, y is negative 4. 2, 1, 2, 3. This is an open dot because it's not equal to. Okay. And then it only gets bigger, so it goes to the right. This has got a slope of 1, so I can go up 1, over 1. This function is defined by two different equations, but it's restricted in the domain. So this is saying that y equals x minus 6, but only when x is bigger than 2, okay? So that line would actually be a full line, but we cut off anything that wasn't bigger than 2. This one, it's got to be smaller than 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug 2 in the equation. So 4 minus 2 squared is what? 0. 2, 0, and then this is going to be a, a parabola, right? Okay. <coughs> so if I plugged in, and I'm going to need to plug in 1 and 0, 4 minus 1 would be 3. Now we're not going to really be graphing these so much. I just want you to understand what it is. 0 would be 4, and I need to go at least one more spot. So negative 1, 
would be three again. So this parabola is doing this. It's basically, it's not basically, it is. It's a parabola that anything bigger than two I cut off because it's telling me x has got to be less than or equal to two. This is what I call it, or this is what we call a jump discontinuity, okay? It starts out being something, it stops, and it jumps to something else. Can you identify that this is a jump discontinuity? Look at the way the equation looks. Algebraically, it's easy to see. It's kind of funky looking. Y'all okay on that? One more kind that we're going to talk about. Part of it. By the way, while I'm right here, before I flip over, what's the domain of this function? Mm -hmm. It's negative infinity to what? Two. two here, but can it be two? There's a closed dot, so can it be two? It can. It can't be two here, but it can be two here. How about past that? The domain is negative infinity to infinity. Remember, you've got to look at it as, as a whole. Don't look at it as pieces. So what you should do is Well, you look at them as a whole. You look at them as... So the reason... Yes. And the reason it's like this is because if this bubble was filled in, it wouldn't be a function anymore. It would fail the vertical line test. So it picks up on the other side. But every single x has a y that goes with it. Do you see that? Every single place I go for x, even though I have two different equations, every single one has a y that goes with it. What would the range be? What is the lowest that this graph would ever go? Negative infinity. What's the height? Why? Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. If, if this piece wasn't here, I would have to stop here for my range. But because this piece is going up forever, then my range goes up forever. Yes. Because this is going down forever. If you only had that bottom part, then the range would be from here, which is what? One, two, three, four, negative four, but it would be a parenthesis because there's an open dot, and then it would go up forever. I hope we do this so much with the domain and range that it really starts to click with you. Yes, a little bit better. All right. One more. We have what we call infinite. This is what you're most familiar with. Infinite discontinuities. This is what happens when the denominator equals zero. Okay, remember those asymptotes we talked about? We haven't talked a lot about them. But it's an entire place that's left out, okay? So for example, and we've done so many of these. Um, if f of x equals Where's your domain restriction here? Mm -hmm. X minus 3, what about it? It can't be. So what can X not be? So when you graph this, it ends up looking like this. And it actually goes up. 
I'm just doing a rough sketch here, yeah. <clears throat> so this, because it's got this invisible boundary here, because this is where my denominator would equal zero, that is an infinite discontinuity. It goes on forever and ever and ever, right? Forever and ever and ever, X can never be that number, so it is an infinite discontinuity. Does that make sense? All right. Um, what's the domain of this function? Mm -hmm. And you can't really tell the, dom the range here because I didn't draw it accurately. And I apologize. I think it actually goes up to like two. I think somewhere in there. We'll have to graph that on the calculator. But for right now, to get through for the sake of time, you see what I mean by the three different continuities. All right, let me draw you three pictures. You tell me what kind of con discontinuity is. Okay, tell me when you're done. All right, I'm going to draw you a couple pictures. I want you to tell me, is it continuous or discontinuous? And if it's discontinuous, what type of discontinuity does it have? How do you know? This up. I never lifted my pencil up the first time, right? Continuous. What type? A removable discontinuity. It's a hole, right? See, y'all got this. Discontinuous, it's an infinite discontinuity. When it's approaching something from both sides, that's an infinite discontinuity. One more kind, everybody's favorite. <laughs> it's a jump discontinuity. It's a jump discontinuity. See, it's not hard, right? Yeah. What you got? This? Oh, this one's infinite. The pieces, so you can look as we move a little bit further. It might say, is the function continuous on the interval from negative 2 to 1? Well, yeah, from that interval it is, but if you look at it as a whole, it's not. Um, one thing I didn't mention, let me just say, sometimes you may have a hole, but there may be a point up here where it's defined. That is still a removable discontinuity. Okay? It's still a hole, even though there's a point up here where it defines it, so that it's defined for all x's, it doesn't matter. It's still, it's still a removable discontinuity. Any questions? Okay.